Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the December school system planning call. As we look at our agenda today, we have a wide number of topics to cover, but before we get in there, I just wanna give everyone on the call an update that is not on this slide, but to let you know that we do um, have a planned technology outage this weekend. The Office of Technology Services with the state needs to perform some necessary maintenance on the LDOE network. And therefore, on Saturday, December 8th, from 8 p.m. to midnight, the LDOE website, the Insight portal, including leads and School Finder, will all be down um, for that for a maximum of that four-hour period to complete that necessary maintenance. Hopefully, none of those systems are needed at, on an evening, on a Saturday night evening. Um, but if so, we apologize for any inconvenience that causes. Okay, getting into our deck for this week, starting with supporting school system planning and improvement. As we've discussed before, the department is committed to ensuring all students achieve grade level standards. To achieve this goal, the department has been supporting systems in two ways. First, through plan implementation in 1819 with a focus on supporting comprehensive intervention required schools, or CIR. And second, through a school system planning process for the 2019-2020 school year, with a focus on facilitating an improved planning process focused on schools identified as CIR, but also urgent intervention required, or UIR. Let's transition to our second focus this year, which is the school system planning for 2019-2020. We are very excited that SuperApp is officially launched and that the school system planning process is now underway. School systems are now working collaboratively in planning teams to build one unified plan across a set of priorities outlined in the school system planning framework and to develop one application for funding, the Super App, to support that plan, including both your federal formula and competitive funds. School systems will submit and receive approval of the plan and funding request on one unified timeline. A central focus for the planning process this year is the development of the CIR and UIR strategies for each school system struggling school. These CIR and UIR strategies focus on the department's four, four top priorities as defined in the school system planning framework. As a reminder, those priorities are core academics, workforce talent, students with diverse needs, and LEA systems. School systems can find details about what is required for CIR and UIR schools and the approval and funding criteria on pages 14 and 15 in the school system planning guide. As a brief refresher, we'll walk through the requirements for CIR and UIR. In order to ensure students have access to a high quality curriculum delivered by a fully prepared teacher, a school system must include the following strategies for their CIR and UIR academic schools. Tier one curriculum in ELA and math for all grade levels in identified schools. Professional development for all teachers, including teachers who serve students with special needs and English learners on the curriculum from a high quality vendor provider. At least one high quality assessment for each grade level in ELA and math and partnerships with teacher preparation programs to meet these schools greatest talent needs. As a reminder, these strategies are the same as last year's redesign requirements. This year, there are also new strategies that CIR and UIR schools will adopt. At CIR schools, strategies in the super app must include at least one mentor teacher to support new and resident teachers, and one ELA and one math content leader who receive training on how to support their peers with strong implementation of the curriculum. At UIR schools, Strategies in the super app must include an administrator and a teacher to participate in the intervention content leaders program that will focus on supporting schools to build a strong intervention model that engages all teachers within the school building. As you make your way through the planning process, please do not hesitate to reach out to your network leaders to, for support in developing these strategies. A suite of planning tools and resources are available to support school systems with planning. They can be accessed on the department's website in the School Improvement Library or by clicking the Super App button on our homepage. They are also linked on this slide. 
There are several key dates to be aware of throughout the planning cycle. First, school systems should be in the process of building their super app between now and the due date of February 1. The department will approve or reject CIR and UIR plans by April 17th, and Bessie will approve competitive applications on April 17th. The super app grant period for funds will begin on July 1. For a more detailed timeline, please refer to page 16 in your school system planning guide. If you have any questions about planning for 1920, please reach out to your network leader. A key tool in the planning process is the super app checklist. This checklist articulates the steps required to complete the super app by the deadline. School systems were introduced to the checklist during the November collabor collaboration trainings, excuse me, it can be found on page 12 of the school system planning guide. The first step, developing a team, confirming team assignments, and setting a meeting schedule should be complete at this time. School systems are now in the process of executing their planning meetings to identify key priorities for 2019-2020 and funding sources to support those priorities. Your network team should be working with you throughout December to complete step two. Please reach out to them if you have any questions. As a reminder, the department is committed to providing strategic and technical support to school systems throughout the planning process. There are several ways to access support. For technical super app questions, please send an email to ldoe.grantshelpdesk at la.gov and put super app in the subject line. We are committed to responding to those emails within one business day. Office hours by phone are held Monday from 11 to 12. Links to the office hours are included in the district and charter newsletters. And as we've said before, network teams will continue to provide planning guidance throughout the process. Please reach out to them for support as needed. The Principal and Superintendent Secure Portal, located at www.louisianaschools.info, is an interactive data exploration tool first launched in December 2017 to support school systems and school leaders understand their academic, early childhood, and workforce talents data. The Secure Portal will be updated with the 2017-2018 K-12 and ECE accountability results by tomorrow, December 6th. Here are the directions for adding new Secure Portal users. For new principals and school system leaders who need access to the principal and superintendent secure reporting portal, a user request form has been placed on the DMFTP in the secure portal update folder under the file name secure portal user request form. Data management FTP coordinators should retrieve the file and provide it to superintendents for updating. Once the updates have been completed, the file should be renamed using the naming guidance listed on this slide and uploaded in the same location as the original. Superintendents will also need to send an email to system support at la.gov confirming the user request and providing consent to the department to grant access to those users. Permissions are updated bi-weekly. We realize this process is not ideal and have committed to finding an easier uh, way to add new users. And beginning in September 2019, district security coordinators will have the authority to directly designate Secure Portal users. Additional information on this new process will be provided next month. The department released three targeted resources in November to assist school systems in implementing evidence-based behavior interventions using a multi-tier system of support. These resources provide vetted options to support practice at each of the three tier levels within the multi-tier system of support. The Behavioral Intervention Vendor Guide provides partners with expertise in planning and implementing the multi-tier system of support approach to behavioral intervention, as well as other evidence-based practices that bolster effective behavioral remediation in students. The Social Emotional Curriculum Portfolio provides evidence-based strategies to support student social emotional learning and community expectations that bolster student climate at the universal level in a multi-tier system of support. And lastly, the Behavioral Interventions Portfolio provides a vetted list of targeted interventions to address specific behaviors at the tiers one, two, and three levels within a multi-tier system of support. 
All resources are linked on this slide and also available in the School Improvement Library on the department's website. The department is hosting a Behavioral Intervention Summit on January 30th to provide school systems with important information regarding implementing a multi-tier system of support to promote effective evidence-based behavioral intervention. This summit will provide targeted professional development sessions on how to implement a multi-tier system of support and subcomponents of work that support interventions at each tier level. This includes evidence-based interventions, trauma-informed approaches, classroom management, cross-cultural competence, database decision-making, school climate and culture, and implementation fidelity measures. There will also be sessions regarding alternative education redesign and policy revisions regarding evidence-based practice at alternative schools and programs. Registration for this event is free and recommended to all staff at the school and school system level that engage in behavioral intervention. Please note that on December 18th, the platform that the LDOE uses for registration will transfer to a new vendor and directions for using that new platform will be shared in the newsletter. Registrations prior to December 18th will be transferred into the new system and no further steps are necessary. This transfer on December 18th will be true for anyone who has registered for an event using Wisdomware in the past. That is the platform that is changing. So please note that if you have used Wisdomware in the past, you will be using a different platform after December 18th and those details will be shared in the newsletter. Registration for the January-February Supervisor and Principal Collaboration will open on Monday, January 7th on the new platform and will close on Friday, January 25th. This year, each collaboration begins with a general, general session that frames the department's priorities for the 18-19 school year. Sessions focus on two areas supporting the implementation of the school system redesign plans and school system planning for 1920 to support early childhood curriculum and instruction, special education, assessments and accountability, workforce, and high school opportunities. The supervisor and principal collaborations will be offered on the following dates and locations. January 28th in Baton Rouge, January 31st in Harvey, February 5th in Ruston, please note that this is a location change. February 7th in Lake Charles, please note that this is a date change. The supervisor collaboration sessions will be from eight to 12 and the principal collaboration sessions will be from 12 to four. Please direct any questions about this event to district support at la.gov. As we've communicated in previous calls and newsletters, the 2019 Teacher Leader Summit will take place June 26th to the 28th at the Convention Center in New Orleans. This event has grown in popularity each year, and we're excited to bring together more than 6,000 Louisiana educators this summer. We want to take a moment to draw your attention to a few key updates related to this year's event. First, we're opening registration earlier than ever before, and there will be three phases to register early bird, regular, and on-site. You and your educators can take advantage of early bird registration in our new registration flat platform that will begin in January. Second, to help offset the cost of running a high-quality multi-day event for thousands of Louisiana educators, the department will begin to charge a small registration fee for the 2019 summit. This fee will cover admission to conference, sessions, and lunch on Wednesday and Thursday. Educators can receive a discount by registering early and by registering for all three days at once. Finally, sessions led by talented Louisiana educators are always some of the best and most popular sessions at the event. The application to lead sessions at the summit is available now. Please encourage your educators to apply by April 1st. Please refer to the overview document linked on this slide for additional information about the summit. We'll share a lot more details over the coming months. Moving to early childhood teaching and learning. And as we go through the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the chat box uh, and we will answer them directly if we can. Uh, and if we need to answer them on the phone, if they apply to everyone, we will take the opportunity to pause and answer them on the phone. 
few updates related to early childhood. The 2017-2018 performance profiles are a great tool to support site improvement. The department provides several supports to assist site personnel with understanding the information contained in the profile. Linked on this slide, you will find the rating calculator, which explains how performance ratings are derived, an informational webinar recording, frequently asked questions, and tips for sites which contain action steps for improvement and additional informative links. Not only should sites ensure that their teachers receive the results and feedback from their fall class observations, site leaders should also work with teachers to compare their results to previous years, identify areas to target for improvement, and use new strategies to meet these goals. February 28th is the second of three annual child assessment checkpoints. All early childhood teachers should be documenting progress of their children in their classroom by submitting evidence in the GOLD online system so that performance levels can be finalized for the upcoming checkpoint. Finally, if your school system is the lead agency for your community network, you and your network partner with infant classrooms should begin preparing for infant class observations, which will be a requir requirement beginning with the 2019-2020 school year. If your school system is the lead agency for your early childhood community network, there are additional important planning responsibilities, such as preparing for coordinated enrollment, completing class observations, and supporting partners to improve. Please refer to this slide for guidance on those steps. As mentioned earlier, the 2018-2019 PD Vendor Guide has been updated and released on November 1st. The entries have been alphabetized by subject and include vendor descriptions, sample partnership services, and sample long-term partnership models. School system and school leaders can use this guide to identify vendors who provide initial and ongoing training for Tier 1 curricula. Throughout the month of December, Tier 1 ELA and math curriculum providers will be hosting one-hour webinars to provide information about their materials. A complete list of webinars and login information is available and linked on this slide. The Louisiana Department of Education believes that all students, including students with disabilities, English learners, and students who persistently struggle, can achieve grade level standards. These two resources provide information on how to support students who struggle in English language arts and math. Join the upcoming collaborations in January, February, and in March to attend parts two and three of these series. Eagle items are continuously being added into the Eagle system. All additions are reflected in the teacher's guide to Leap, the LEAP 360 appendix. Key dates for LEAP 360 Interim Phase 2 are located on this slide. Please note that student access for ELA grades 2 through 8 Form 2 and math grades 3 through 5 Form 2 will open on January 10th. The report schedule for LEAP 360 Interim Phase 1 is located on this slide. Test session summaries, school summaries, and test session rosters began posting on Monday and are updated every 24 hours. Two new reports, the school list and test session list reports will begin to post next Monday. The report schedule for LEAP 360 Interim Phase 2 is located on this slide. As you can see, initial posts for reports will begin on January 11th. The interactive reporting tool for LEAP 360 was released in October. This is a teacher tool within eDirect that includes student history of LEAP 360 tests and a response lookup system for teachers to view all student responses, including individual student responses for technology enhanced items. Detailed directions for interactive reporting can be found in the eDirect user guide linked on this slide. As we, look forward to, as we look forward toward planning for 1920, the department is sharing that LEAP 360 will continue to be provided at no cost to school systems for the 1920 school year. 
As in previous years, school systems will be required to sign a memorandum of understanding, which protects the content of the test. The LEAP 360 MOU, along with system release dates, will become available in January 2019. Moving to graduation pathways. The 2019 Jumpstart Annual Convention is Tuesday, January 29th at Rays and Canes River Center in Baton Rouge. This year's theme is Stronger Pathways, Stronger Credentials, Stronger Future. The convention seeks to engage school system administrators, high school principals, professional school counselors, Jumpstart regional team members, business and industry partners, and workforce development organizations. The convention, will provide school systems and schools with information on the successes of Jumpstart and the first graduating cohort, and sessions to help strengthen Jumpstart programs, build relationships with industry, business, and local partners, and expand offerings to help all students succeed. Registration for the Jumpstart Convention is open now through January 2nd. However, as I mentioned before, the platform for registering will change on December 18th. If you have already registered for the Jumpstart Convention, there is no need to take any additional steps. Since launching Jumpstart in 2013, Louisiana has made impressive progress in offering high quality industry-based credentials to students. However, there is a need to improve the industry alignment, rigor, and equitable access of IBC statewide. To this end, the department is embarking on a review of Jumpstart to develop Jumpstart 2.0. Starting in early 2019, the department will begin an extensive engagement process with teachers, CTE leaders, counselors, school leaders, industry, and higher education to determine what the next phase of Jumpstart should look like. Additional information about these engagement opportunities will be provided at the Jumpstart Convention. We'd love to hear from you as we go through this process and are interested specifically in your thoughts on challenges with Jumpstart today, things that make it harder to provide a high quality IBC, and also opportunities to improve. What are your ideas for strengthening Jumpstart and making it easier to provide high quality IBC? The Best e Tuition Program for Teachers provides competitive funding for classroom teachers to enroll in courses at regionally accredited colleges or universities in Louisiana. Bessie recently opened up seven seats for the spring 2019 semester, which were awarded to the seven teachers listed on this slide. Applications for the summer and fall 2019 semesters will be available in early 2019. For questions about the program, please review the frequently asked questions or contact STEM at LA.gov. And congratulations to the seven educators chosen for this round. Starting the week of November 19th, school systems began a data validation process. School systems should take this opportunity to review and validate their data entries to ensure their 2018-2019 educator workforce data is reported accurately. This guidance document linked on the slide may be referenced to help school systems understand how to review and validate each file. The data validation process is outlined on this slide. Now that SPS scores have been released for, 17, for the 17-18 academic year, the window for entering leader evaluation scores is open and closes on December 21st. A step-by-step -step PowerPoint outlining the protocol for uploading leader evaluation scores into the Compass Information System, or CIS, will be available in the Compass Library. For more information regarding the Compass Information System timeline, please review the Compass Library located on the Louisiana Believes website. Next week, Bessie will be asked to consider a proposal that will give school systems the flexibility to evaluate school system level leaders with local evaluations, and that creates a new way for educators serving in operational roles to maintain their certificates. This proposal was developed in close collaboration with the Louisiana Association of School Superintendents and the Louisiana State Association of School Personnel Administrators. This proposal will allow school system level administrators to renew their educational leader license using local evaluations. It does not impact teacher or school level leader evaluations. 
It will also allow teachers and school-based administrators serving in operational roles to put their certificates on hold by requesting an operational role status. This way, the certificate will not expire while the educator is serving in a role that is not well suited to being evaluated for the standards of effectiveness. The department would like to thank teachers, administrators, HR personnel, and superintendents for raising this important issue and for working together to come to a solution that enables educators in these important roles to maintain their certification. In October, Bessie established new state credentials for classroom teachers who serve as mentors to aspiring teachers and as curriculum experts within their schools. The credentials, mentor teacher and content leader certificates, will count towards requirements to obtain an educational leader level one certificate and needed to become an assistant principal or principal. To earn a mentor teacher or content leader certificate, candidates must complete a state approved training program and complete the Louisiana Mentor Teacher Assessment Series or the Louisiana Content Leader Assessment Series, which are specially designed licensure assessments unique to each role. This slide provides an overview of the policy shift. This slide provides an overview of the timeline for implementation of those policy shifts. For the Mentor Teacher Certificate, one key date to keep in mind is September 1st, 2020 when the mentor teacher certificate will be required for individuals who serve as a mentor of undergraduate or post-baccalaureate teacher residents. We are excited for these policy shifts and believe that taken as a whole, these shifts will grow Louisiana's cadre of school-based leaders, building up schools coaching and mentoring capacity. In our state, there are two pathways to teaching, undergraduate and post-baccalaureate. For aspiring teachers who enter the teaching profession through the post-baccalaureate route, there's often a wide range of preparation experiences, some which include ample time for practice in the classroom, and others that provide very few opportunities for practice, and often without the support of a mentor teacher. Research shows that mentoring has a significant impact on teacher success and student growth. Regardless of the pathway an aspiring teacher decides to pursue, the preparation experience should offer ample time for practice alongside a trained mentor teacher to ensure a positive impact on student achievement, especially in high need schools and communities. During the 2018-2019 school year, the department is supporting a pilot community of rural school systems that are implementing innovative approaches to post-baccalaureate preparation, which includes strategic partnerships with teacher preparation providers, extensive time for practice throughout the school year, and mentoring by expert teachers at the school site. Tomorrow, we will release a report highlighting important lessons learned from these pilots thus far, including the impact of increasing the amount of mentoring required as part of a post-baccalaureate program. The report, the, excuse me, the report will be made, made available in the Believe and Prepare Tools and Resources section of the Preparation Library. As a reminder, the Teacher and Principal of the Year application process for the 18-19 school year is open. All applications, materials, and timelines are now available in the Award Programs Library, which you can access on the awards page. State-level applications are due by January 23rd and must be submitted via an online application portal, which will open later this month. Each year, the department collects feedback from DTCs and superintendents prior to releasing the upcoming school year's assessment calendar. While the department works to release scores as early as possible each year, paper-based testing for grades three and four is the primary driver of the timeline. Options A, B, and C on this slide were considered by the department, district testing coordinators, and superintendents, and option C has been recommended and selected. The ACT WorkKeys assessment for 11th grade students in the Jumpstart program assesses the academic and career skills that are needed to be successful in the workplace. In addition to being used by business and industry and hiring practices, WorkKey certificates are also used by the department to inform the ACT index for high school performance scores. When students earn silver or higher on WorkKeys, 
it exceeds a student score on the ACT based on a concordance table. The work key score is used in the ACT index. In 2017, the ACT organization made technical changes to the ACT work keys assessments, including updating scoring criteria. This necessitates updating the concordance table for Louisiana. As required by Bulletin 11, the concordance table shall be re-evaluated annually for continued alignment with ACT performance. The technical updates on this slide reflect analytics released by ACT in which it compared the results of students who took both ACT and work keys nationally. However, the recommended updates maintain the concordance between a work key silver and an ACT score of 18. Per policy, the updated concordance table will be used starting in 2019-2020 to ensure clarity of implementation. Another update related to accountability. As many of you will remember, Louisiana's Every Student Succeeds Act plan includes an interest and opportunities indicator that makes up 5% of the school performance score. And that indicator will measure whether schools are, one, providing students with access to a well-rounded education, and two, exposing students to diverse areas of learning in which students can develop their skills and their talents. The resulting in resulting interest and opportunities measure will be the first of its kind nationwide. Given the complexity and the scope of that work, the department will recommend to Bessie in January to update the timeline and policy to develop, pilot, and scale this new accountability measure in order to ensure school systems have sufficient time to learn and implement. I'll explain the proposed timeline in a few slides. As part of this work, the department released a request for information for organizations that could help develop the tools that would be used to evaluate the interest and opportunities indicator. Eight organizations across four categories responded to the RFI. The responses were reviewed for alignment to Louisiana's goals, demonstrated content expertise, coherent vision of excellence, and the feasibility, validity, and reliability of the proposed evaluation tool. Based on the RFI responses, the department has engaged with three nonprofit organizations to develop the interest and opportunities indicator. Those three organizations are the Alliance for Healthier Generation, the New Orleans Arts Education Alliance, and the Center for Applied Second Language Studies at the University of Oregon. This slide contains information on the next steps and the timeline for building out Louisiana's Interest and Opportunities Index. This winter, the department will work with the organizations identified in the RFI to develop rubrics that will be vetted with the field next spring. Pilots will begin in the spring of 2020 with full implementation, full implementation for the 2020-21 school year. The 2018-2019 Assessment Month-by-Month -month Checklist is located in the Assessment Library. Highlights for December are listed on this slide and include downloading the AII Secure Browser for ELPT, verifying and uploading student information for ACT, completing readiness checks for ACT online, and the monthly assessment and accountability call on December 11th. The parent guides listed on this slide are now available in the Family Support Toolbox Library to provide families with information on Louisiana state assessments. Translated versions of these guides in Spanish, Arabic, and Vietnamese are currently available for all guides, with the exception of the parent guide to the LEAP 2025 test. Those versions will be available by the end of December. Please share these guides with family engagement coordinators, principals, teachers, and families. LEAP Connect resources have also been updated. Constructed response and test administrator trainings for LEAP Connect were delivered via webinar this month. The presentations are located in the assessment 
guidance, the assessment and assessment guidance library. The LEAP Connect assessment guide has been updated to include links to these new resources. The LEAP Connect online tools, training, and directions for test administration for the OTT are available for teachers to use prior to testing. We've used this slide before, so I won't read it in its entirety, but as a reminder, for any student who participates in the Spring 2019 LEAP Connect alternate assessment, school systems must add qualifying cognitive and or adaptive assessment results to verify their eligibility in SIR by January 4th. It's important to note that students will not be able to participate in the LEAP Connect alternate assessment this spring unless their eligibility is verified. District technology and test coordinators have received information about the ELPT Secure Browser after, over the past few months. As a reminder, the current browser will need to be updated by the end of December. More information can be found in the EL portal linked above. Access to the ELPT assessment guide. You may access the ELPT assessment guide to review updates made to the rubric section. A quick reminder about assessment accommodations. At the conclusion of each testing window, the department conducts an accommodations audit to ensure students receive all accommodations as documented on their IEP, IAP. Tests that are administered with inappropriate accommodations will be voided for accountability. This year, again, school systems will be able to choose to administer ACT online or on paper. District test coordinators and technology directors should review the requirements linked here to ensure they are ready for online testing. The deadline, the deadline to indicate a testing delivery mode is January 25th. In October, the department hosted webinars to support teachers and content supervisors in incorporating the LEAP 2025 practice test in classroom instruction. The webinar slides and a webinar recording are available in the practice test library. The department will run this same webinar one more time on January 9th to accompany the availability of student access of the practice test for grades three through eight. Any teacher or content supervisor is welcome to join the webinar using the link shown on this slide. The department is committed to providing families with a complete look at school quality and helping them find the right school or early childhood center for their children using the Louisiana School and Center Finder. The department is seeking feedback on the 2018 school report cards and early child performance profiles released in the School and Center Finder in order to make improvements to the system in 2019. School system and school leaders should please share their feedback through the survey linked on this slide by January 11th. This slide highlights upcoming action items for the 1819 open collection. In the eScholar Unique ID system, data managers should submit and update student enrollments for the 2018-2019 school year. Data cannot be submitted to any of the student systems until student data has been updated in eScholar Unique ID. Data managers should ensure, ensure enrolled students are matched against the SNAP or food stamp recipient file, which includes, which identifies students directly certified for free lunch. This is important and impacts economically disadvantaged calculations and funding. Data managers should also ensure student data and staff data, including class schedules, is submitted to SIFT by the December 7th deadline. This data is important for CTE and CDF funding, class size reporting, and workforce reporting. By February 8th, mid-year transcripts should be submitted to STS for all students in grades T9 through 12 for the February Board of Regents extract. This collection is important for determining admission to post-secondary schools. STS recently opened after being closed since early October for system maintenance. Data managers will notice several enhancements, including additional student data displayed on screen and improved student data export capability. 
The February 1 MFP collection will be opening on January 14th. Data managers should be preparing to submit data for this collection, which is important for MFP funding and economically disadvantaged calculations and funding. It is important that all student data is accurate and submitted to SIS by the February 15th deadline. This information will also be used for student pre-coded ID labels for the ACT. Also, data managers should be preparing to submit class schedules for spring EOC testers. Please note that this data is important for ensuring test session data is correct and e-direct. The data coordinator's monthly webinar will be held tomorrow, December 6th, and again on January 10th at 1, 1 o'clock. The webinars will include a review of open collections and data reporting. This slide contains the information needed to join tomorrow's webinar. Please email system support at la.gov with questions regarding this webinar. We've gotten a couple questions throughout this presentation asking where people can access this slide deck. As a reminder, you can always access the slide deck from this presentation on the school system planning call page on the department's website. And a copy of this presentation was also provided in yesterday's district newsletter. This slide provides a summary of the key deadlines and key support and resources that have been provided since our last call and that are happening in the next two months. Please note that the next school system planning call will take place on January 9th, and we wish you and your uh, students, your coworkers, and your family and friends all a very happy holiday season, and we will see you next year. Thank you.